Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. You know, it's a busy day at BHB. We're going to be doing some ultrasounding on some boas and pythons. We've got a friend from New Mexico named Kim that you're going to learn more about, and we're going to talk about some snake myths and see if there's some fact or fiction. So, you know what? You're watching Snake Bites. <laughs> So right now we're ultrasounding ball pythons. It's the breeding season, it's coming to the end of it and it's really important to make sure we know what follicle size these animals are to continue to breed them or when they're getting close to ovulating. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this animal and see what we have. We take the probe and we actually look for the gallbladder, which is a big black spot. And right behind that gallbladder, you're gonna see a bunch of little follicles. And this girl actually has some pretty big follicles. So we go ahead and we freeze the frame. And these follicles are actually pre-eggs. They're not quite eggs yet. And this particular one is 33 millimeters big. Uh, now they're gonna ovulate at about 45 millimeters. And uh, you know they'll start at small, you know, one, two millimeters, and then we'll work our way all the way up to 45 millimeters. And we stop breeding at about 40 millimeters. So it's really important to keep an eye on this this time of the year and see what kind of growth that they have before they actually become eggs when they're about 45 millimeters. Okay, so we use the exact same technique with ultrasounding with boas too. And what's really neat about boas is they're live bearers. So, you know, you can actually sometimes see little babies inside. So what we're doing here is we're looking for actual little baby snakes in these, uh, these actual things. And there you can see one right now. You can see the little baby snake actually coiled up right there. Wow, that thing is actually really cool. I hope it's, uh, it's gonna be a good live baby. You don't see any movement, but at this age, you really don't normally see much movement in these guys, so. But uh, there it is, that's the little baby boa constrictor that's gonna be born probably in another you know, 60, 70 days. So we really use the same exact technique on all boas and pythons, and we're basically monitoring the follicular growth just to see where they're at in their breeding season. So basically, this is a Woma python. This is from Australia, and they're just really beautiful, placid animals. You can see how beautiful they're little eyebrows are and all right this girl has some nice size follicles she's 24 millimeters which means that she's not that far off if we can continue to get her bread she's probably going to ovulate and have eggs here in another couple months so we're in good shape with these and we basically use the exact same technique with all our pythons we keep an eye on what size their follicles are before they ovulate and it actually turns into eggs my name is Kim and I'm from Alamogordo, New Mexico. I'm up here visiting Brian from BHB. Come to see his collection. I've been talking to Brian over MySpace for probably about six months and I finally got to meet him up at Arlington at the NARBC show. And we just would like to come up here and visit all the snakes that he's got because he's got some amazing stuff. Yes, I am on a vacation and it's kind of weird that my vacation consists of getting bit and cleaning cages. Um, I kind of a attracted to reptiles, just especially snakes, because of the way they move, I guess. They're just very unique. They're solid, solid muscle, and they're very graceful and beautiful and scary all at the same time. Just almost an adrenaline high. Today, I clean all of the larger snakes, well, almost all of them, except for the ones that were breeding, since it is breeding season. We just take all the paper out, uh, wipe down the cages, clean the water bowl, put them back in. I did get bit a couple times today. I have a couple on my arm from the big berm and one on my leg from a smaller granite berm, but it's just part of the job. I was moving one of the big female berms back into her cage and me and another guy had some problems with her. She was just a little angry. Now that you know more about me, let's check out some snake fact or fiction. Snake myths, fact or fiction. Okay, so what we're talking about here is can you tell the age of a rattlesnake by the amount of rattles it has? That's a good question. You see, a rattlesnake does gain a rattle every time it sheds, and it could shed three or four times a year depending on how much it eats. Also, it can lose rattles along the way, so I'd have to say that's fiction. I'd agree. Fiction. Fiction. Okay, so there you have it. You know what, if you have any myths or anything that you want us to cover in a future show, make sure you send it to us at snakebitestv at gmail.com, and we'll go ahead and cover it in a future episode. But you need to tune in next week because we're going to cover colubrid snake breeding. You do not want to miss it.